These are three very important ratios in mathematics and we need to know their values. They show up absolutely everywhere. With just a little bit of extra information though, you'll be able to remember their values. There are three things you need to know before you can determine the values of these ratios. Number one, some definitions. Number two, multiplication. And number three, a little bit about zero. So let me show you. In mathematics, definitions are important. So anytime I want to understand what they mean by a particular word, I look it up in the dictionary. So this is the first word that we're going to look at, undefined. Now undefined is defined as not clearly or precisely shown, described, or limited. I think this definition down here is a little bit more mathematical based, not provided with a definition. Now in mathematics, what does it mean to be undefined? Well, you're not provided with, with a definition. In other words, there is no solution that exists for the equation that you're working with or the relationship that you're working with. So if something's undefined, there is no solution to that problem. The second definition we're going to look at is indeterminate. Now indeterminate means not definitely or precisely determined or fixed, vague, not known in advance, that really doesn't apply, not leading to a definite end or result. So C and number two to me make the most sense mathematically. Number two says having an infinite number of solutions. So that's quite the opposite of undefined. Undefined, there is no number that is a solution to that problem. Indeterminate means there's an infinite number of solutions to that problem. So if you're working with something and you can plug in an infinite number of values and get an answer or a result, that means it's an indeterminate result. We want unique, finite number of solutions to our problems, otherwise it's considered indeterminate. The last two things that we need to see are pretty quick. So if I take this ratio, six divided by two, we know that that's equal to three. But there's a way that I can write this division problem as multiplication. I can say that six equals three times two, and it pretty much holds the same meaning. Sometimes this though is a little bit easier to understand than this is. Multiplication is much more straightforward. So being able to write back and forth the division problem versus a multiplication problem is important. The last thing we need to remember is something about zero. If I take zero and multiply it times any number that I can think of, just one number multiplied by zero, what should I always get? I should always get zero back out. So that is the last bit of information that you need in order to be able to find the values of those three famous ratios. All right, based on this new information, let's see if you can fill in the values for these ratios. Now I've kind of made this a multiple choice problem. The choices that you have to fill in these boxes are these right here. You can choose undefined, zero, indeterminate, both undefined and indeterminate, and none of the above. One of these will fit in one of these, all right? So now before you go ahead and willy-nilly make your decision, let's use the step of rewriting these as multiplication to help us out. So I'm going to rewrite this guy as zero equals two times box. This one rewritten will be two equals zero times box. And then this last one becomes, let's see, zero equals zero times box. Now you need to think about what kinds of numbers can go in each of those boxes, then decide which of these cases it fits, and then we can conclude what the value of these ratios are. I'm gonna give you about 15 seconds to see how far you can get, and then I'll come back and show you what I got. All right, 15 seconds, go. Okay, that was about 15 seconds. So let me show you the answers I got. So this first one is zero. The second one 
is undefined. The third one is indeterminate. Now I'm going to tell you how I got those values and then compare it to yours. All right, on this first one I say, okay, what, what number times two is going to give me zero? Well, I know that if I multiply zero by any number, I get zero. So the only value that I can actually put here is zero. Good. Now this one here, I said undefined. So let's think about this. Uh, what number times zero is going to give me two? Well, if we have a decent understanding of zero, we know that zero times any number will always give me what? Zero. In this case, I get two. So there isn't a single number here that I can put in to give me two as a result. So I put seven, seven times zero, not two, but zero. If I put in minus five, minus five times zero is not two, but zero. So there is no number that exists in the real number system that I can put in there. So we call that undefined because there is no number that's defined that makes that statement true. Now in this last one here, zero times a number gives me zero. Well, if I put two in, it works. If I put seven in, it works. If I put minus 27 in, it works. So it looks like all numbers will work with this last one. I can put any number in there I choose and it works. So in this case, we call it indeterminate because I cannot determine a single unique value that makes a statement true. I can get lots of them, but I can't get one number that makes this true. So in the end then, our values for our ratio comes out to this. I get zero here. Here, this is undefined. And this last one is indeterminate. So the lovely way to create or find these values for these ratios comes from this multiplication. This is very easy to reason in order to find these. So I hope you did well on our quiz and enjoyed this lesson.